Hi, this is Natalie with SBR's industry news update for sportsbookreview.com. With the first quarter over this year, gaming companies are reporting on their equity markets worldwide, and overall it has been rather kind. The market vectors gaming ETF, which is comprised of 52 industry stocks worldwide, has reported an increase of 16% in the first three months of this year. Common belief for this increase is people's rising optimism towards our global economy, which has boasted valuations across the gambling sector. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not quite the same for US land-based casinos, where public gaming companies experienced a seesaw-like movement in March. The average daily stock price for the Las Vegas Strip operators, MGM Resorts and Caesar Entertainment saw a decrease of a dollar plus. However, Las Vegas Sands Corp, Pinnacle Entertainment, as well as the Meristar Casinos each posted slight gains. Las Vegas Sands Corp and Wynn Restored Limited's prices were up 9 and 8 percent respectively. Table game maker and equipment manufacturer Shuffle Master saw its average daily stock price increase 70 percent, 17 percent from February. In other news, the world's largest listed online gaming operator, Bwin Party Digital Entertainment, announced that it tends to sharpen its focus on its social gaming lineup. The company plans to continue to significantly invest in improving its bingo and casino game offerings for the remainder of 2012. The company has also released its financial results for 2011, showing a 674 million euros in net revenue. <laughs> Bet Islands has moved into their own wagering facility this week. In addition to changing locations and server hosts, Bet Islands tells SBR that there are more wagering options to choose from, as well as totally new sportsbook and casino software. The new Bet Islands pl mobile platform is expected to be available shortly. Here at SBR, we receive hundreds of play disputes against sportsbooks each week. To discuss these disputes, we are joined today by our very own Justin Seven. Justin Seven is a licensed attorney, having practiced law in the US and mediated more than 10,000 play disputes for SBR. Justin, one question our viewers would like to know is how does your expertise in contract law help you mediate disputes against online gaming companies? A lot of times books and players see a dispute very differently, but with any kind of dispute, we always take the viewpoint of how would a U.S. court handle this dispute if gambling were legal in the U.S.? And a U.S. court would always rely on contract law to resolve these disputes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, most sports books are rated by SBR to give our viewers a better understanding of the safety and quality of each sports book. Uh, how do we go about rating them? The most important thing is the security of your money there. Everything else is secondary to that. Okay. Um, and we reported last week on uh, our website, sportsbookreview.com, about three payment complaints against All You Bet Sportsbook, uh, where, where players are owed approximately $8,000. Now, this sportsbook is classified as unrated by SBR. So, bearing that in mind, would you advise our viewers not to play at that sportsbook? Uh, I, I wouldn't say never play there. But mm -hmm. weigh the risks of you know the problems you see before playing there. Right. Anytime you're playing with an unrated sports book, you you know face the possibility of them going under with your money. You know, for instance, 21K Bet was unrated. They entered the market. A lot of people signed up for their bonuses, and then they quickly went you know into complete scam mode. Now I don't know that if All You Bet will turn out to be a scam book. You know, they have three complaints compared to you know yeah. when you when you have a scam book, you typically have you know all kinds of complaints. So this, I, mean, I don't think they're a scam book, but again, they're unrated, they're new, they're untested. So, you know, obviously do so at your own risk. Sort of tread carefully kind of thing. Well, yeah, if, if you do play, you play with a small amount that you're comfortable getting stiffed on. Okay. Um, what's the amount of money you've helped a player get paid from a sports book? Uh, I can think of probably several times that have had uh, successful ones, like low, low six figures. Uh, we have some larger ones that we haven't resolved, like the, you know the three and a half million against Betfair. Ooh. We also have you know hundreds of thousands against you know Sportsbook.com uh -huh. for the you know, correlated parlays, uh, half a million versus SBG Global. Now these aren't resolved today, but the fact that they're outstanding and that they keep a book's rating down until these old problems get resolved mm -hmm. uh, mean that these players may still have hope because every once in a while you find out a dispute that's eight years old gets resolved with a player being paid. Yeah, I've read some of those recently, actually, and it's, that's, a, that's good news. 
Uh, so what, else, what outstanding uh, cases do you have in the pipeline for us today? Well, I have a, a, a series of cases against sportsbetting.ag that are kind of troubling. Now, when you're looking at a, a dispute, you don't just look at the single dispute in isolation. You look at it along with all the other complaints. For example, I was mentioning 21K bet. When you get 30 complaints of various ways that money's disappearing from accounts and people aren't getting paid, it's not just you know 30 individual complaints. It's a pattern mm -hmm. where they're, you know, the, the entire world is getting stiffed by them. And with sports, if it, whereas if you just have one random complaint, uh, you're much more likely to believe a, you know, whatever the sports book says on it. Now with sportsbetting.ag, uh, we have a series of complaints that are coming in together. You know, a, f a month ago we reported about the player who got mugged out of 16,000 when uh, he selected the wrong state from the drop-down menu because they didn't have Louisiana. Yeah. But we have, two more, yeah, we have two more confiscation cases. One for six, another 16,000 confiscation, um, and another one for 3,500. And well, you know, I'm still discussing these cases with them, but you know, there are red flags going up because first they give me contradictory facts on these cases. Uh -huh. you know, they originally say, here's the reason we took it, we investigate it, then they stop claiming that and they claim a new reason. Yeah. And in addition, there's also, I have seven slow pay complaints against them that are totaling, I think, over 140000 now. So they, have, mm -hmm. they owe a lot of money. Oh, when you see yeah. a, two things together, you see confiscations and you see a ton of slow pays with a lot of you know, backlog, that raises red flags that there could be you know, something much worse going on there. Hmm, yeah, one to watch out for. Um, and anything else going on for us? Any, any juicy gossip, news, some other cases going on? Well, I always have hundreds of cases open at any given time. Uh, but I, I saw an interesting one with uh, Jax.com. A uh, player placed a bet at odds of 2.2. And when he checked his, he confirmed it at 2.2. And when he checked his wagering history, it was confirmed at odds 2.1. So they mm -hmm. gave him a bet at a lower odds than what he accepted. So apparently, you know, there was a, a software glitch where if they changed the odds, it doesn't tell the player it's been changed even when he accepts it. You know, everyone has played and had the odds changed, but you usually get a warning. This player didn't, and Jax has not made it right, but we're still discussing it. Has a player ever made a false accusation against a sports book? I've had players lie to me before, yeah. uh, but in a vast majority of the cases, both the sports book and the player tell the truth. And in fact, oh. I assume both parties are telling me the truth unless there's a, a direct contradiction between the two and what they're saying. And when that happens, then you try to look at you know the harder evidence to figure out what happened. You know, recordings, IP logs, you know, just anything you can find. Yeah. And it's very rare. I'll say maybe two or three times a year, I can't actually determine what happened. You know, there's not sufficient evidence for me to figure out what really happened. And and when that happens, I can't do much. But yeah. you know, most of the time, both sides are honest, and we can reach you know uh, at least a fair recommendation, which is you know parties usually resolve by. Thanks a lot, Justin. See you next week. For sportsbookreview.com, I'm Natalie Rydstrom.